Hi everyone, uh, today we'll be talking about our new release, the 60 watt uh, garage motion sensor light. So uh, in terms of the design, uh, the applications, and then we'll kind of cover the second function we have with the light as well. So we will be showing kind of a demonstration uh, once we plug it into the fixture for the on-off, on-off kind of uh, second function as well. So we'll just kind of cover the general specifications of this light, some applications you can use it for, and then we will kind of uh, go through on the video and show you kind of installation process, which is very simple, and then we will show you how to kind of set up the multiple functions of the light. So first of all, we'll just kind of go through the design and uh, the light, and then maybe cover some applications as well around the home. So <clears throat> as you can see here, the light itself obviously has foldable or adjustable wings. Uh, there are four wings covering probably around about one square foot. So as you can see there, kind of it's around, uh, it's about 20 to 30 centimeters, not to be exact, but it's about one, one to 1 1.5 square feet in kind of diameter that the wings are covering. So the wingspan itself is kind of about uh, one foot, just under me. So uh, each wing kind of has three ceramic pixels. Uh, this is our patented technology. This is where kind of the chip is directly attached onto the ceramic heatsink, and the heat of the kind of uh, built up within the light will be leaving through the uh, hollow back of the light. So we're using our patented COC chip on ceramic technology, and we're just kind of applying this into garage lighting, uh, warehouse lighting, and kind of some other various applications you can use this light for. So in terms of uh, specifications, this light itself is 60 watts and it is outputting a, a 6,000 lumen beam. So the beam itself is 6,000 lumens at 5,000K daylight. So 6,000 lumens at 5,000K daylight beam is kind of a very bright light. Uh, it is kind of great for task lighting, garage lighting, even working under throughout the day or night. Uh, it can be applied in kind of warehouses as you can kind of fold the wings up and you will still be able to get kind of general distributed uh, even uniform light around the area so as you can see here the wings kind of fold up they work around you uh, you can apply them kind of however you need so if you do just need two wings down two wings up uh, you can do this the wings themselves obviously fold kind of 90 degrees vertically and then horizontally they do flatten out so you can get kind of the whole one square foot area covered if you do kind of need the wing or the light to be kind of uh, more distributed across kind of a wider area and not so kind of intense in one certain space, uh, you can just kind of flick the wings up however you choose. This is kind of the halfway point uh, around kind of 45 degrees and this is kind of a, another kind of most common use for the light. So usually people go all the way down or kind of 45 degrees halfway in between the kind of 90 uh, uh, kind of horizontal fold down wings. So that's 45 degrees. Another common use uh, for the lighting, this is kind of a more for working underneath, so if you're kind of in the garage doing a kind of workshop, uh, kind, of, uh, yeah, kind of stationary work on the station, a workstation in a workshop or the garage, you can just kind of fold the wings up a bit, you will get a kind of more uh, even and wider distributed light. If you're kind of just looking to park kind of in the garage as well, this is the 45 degree angle is kind of a better, kind of a more optimal way of lighting the area as you're just kind of getting more general beam all around the whole area of the room rather than kind of focusing the light all the way down. So if you are looking for very kind of specific, kind of um, very niche or small kind of meticulous work, you do kind of need the light, the wings folded all the way down as you would get a more intense beam over your kind of work area or station. In terms of installing the light itself, it's a very simple E26 uh, fixture or screw in. So you just kind of plug the light into the fixture, twist, and it will eventually just kind of twist in and tighten up into any fixture. So E26 is kind of the most common installation fixture around any American uh, or kind of yeah, American home or US home. And it's kind of a very simple installation method. So it's just a twist and screw until it tightens up. And then you just obviously flip the light on uh, kind of when you're ready to go. Uh, on the bottom of the light, obviously you can see here is the infrared sensor. Uh, it will be kind of, if you do move under it, it will kind of sense heat uh, or from any object kind of uh, from it being a pet or you kind of moving underneath and this will trigger the light to go into either infrared mode or it will be kind of working uh, at 100% capacity. So when the light itself is in infrared mode, the infrared sensor will be kind of, uh, the light itself will be dimmed by 20% and the infrared sensor will be waiting to kind of sense a heat motion underneath it. So. Say you're kind of going into your garage and you have an automatic door. Uh, if this was kind of hung vertically above the kind of uh, from the ceiling looking downwards, the infrared sensor would be here looking down. And uh, if you were to move or kind of make any sudden movements, it would obviously pick up your heat moving underneath the uh, heat sensor. 
and then it will kind of in, illuminate from kind of dropping from either 20% up to 100% for 6,000 lumens. Okay, so as you can see, the screw in is just a basic E26 twist and screw. You just kind of keep turning the light until it's uh, fully locked in or kind of feels tight in your hands. Uh, we will kind of switch the light on now and then you can kind of see uh, the light itself just initially switch on and then go into infrared mode. So uh, in terms of kind of switching the light on, it will initially go to full brightness of 6000 lumens and then you wait 30 seconds and the light will dim down. It will be noticeable on the camera and it will dim down into infrared mode. So you will be able to see this kind of switch from light, just we have to wait 30 seconds initially from when you turn the light first on into infrared mode. So now I'll just kind of switch the light on and you kind of get a better idea and look of kind of the light itself switching into infrared mode.